Hello and welcome to my No Bells and Whistles short series podcast coming to you raw and unedited. The aim of all my podcasts is to bring you awareness and empower you. If it entertains and makes you laugh, that is great too. So if you haven't listened to my previous series, please go ahead and check them out. My name is Obi Grayson Nicker, also known as OGN. And you're listening to episode four of Straight Talk with OGN. It is a beautiful morning over here and I hope that you're having a great day. I'm so thankful to be able to share a part of my day with you. And I hope that this podcast makes a difference in your life. Even if it's a very little one or a massive one, if it makes a difference in someone's life, brings an insight into their life or causes a positive shift or growth within them and in their relationship that is even better. So today's episode is about relationships, specifically intimate relationships. So let's get into it. First, what is a relationship? It is the connection between between people things or both. Now, if I generalize or simplify, I would actually say it is one, the connection between two or more living things. For instance, in a marriage between a man and a woman, a man and a man, a woman and a woman, between parents and their children, between partners at work, between friends, or relationships between a human and their pet or between two animals, like a cat and a dog. Two, it is the connection between two or more non-living things. For instance, um, in an engine, in a car, which enables it to run smoothly. Third is the connection between a living thing and a non-living thing. For instance, between someone and their car, someone and their wig, someone and their jewelry, and so on and so forth. Now, if you look at what I've just done in all the descriptions I've given, the operative word had been connection. Now, the level, which is the depth of connection, depends on the type of relationship and the level of importance we attribute to the relationship. Now, this topic, uh, the topic relationship is as deep and wide as the sea and today I will be focusing on a tiny aspect of the, of relationships between the live between living things called humans okay right now over the course of our life we will find ourselves in one or more types of relationship it could be friendships it could be a professional relationship family relationships acquaintances platonic relationships romantic relationships and so on and so forth. Each relationship requires active participants to sustain it. However, the quality and the quantity of activeness depends or tends to depend on the type of relationship that you are involved in and the level of importance each participant attributes to the relationship and the person they are in a relationship with. In relationships that require more participants or sorry, more participation from both partners, for instance, marriage, one person cannot successfully carry the relationship without breaking their back, figuratively speaking, and resentment creeping in. In relationships that require participants to be more invested, like um, in a committed dating or marriage and so forth. You must strive to do your best for you and the other person that you're in a relationship with and vice versa. You must not be a perfectionist nor hold the other to standards that you're that are unsustainable, unattainable, ridiculous, degrading, that keeps them constantly jumping hoops or running a hamster wheel. It is physically, mentally, emotionally exhausting for them and will lead to frustration, anger and worse 
it might end up backfiring on you if your behavior persists. Now, one of the other things that is very important in a relationship or in this type of relationship is trust, respect, patience, kindness, consideration, courtesy are all imperative to create a healthy relationship. And that is if that's your goal in your type of relationship, looking to create a healthy relationship. The thing that helped get that relationship to begin in the first place is the thing that will help you keep that relationship. Now, I once had a guy I was dating literally say to me, I've got you now. I have, I don't have to do anything that, um, I don't have to do the things that I did when I was chasing you. I had to remind him that I was not married to him and could easily walk which actually happened about three months after I made that statement. I ended up having to break up with um, this um, gentleman. My advice to you is not to stop treating the person you are with in a relationship with love, consideration, respect, whether you are married or not. Stop taking your partner for granted. This is the height of ultimate disrespect. For instance, you suddenly stop taking them out on a date. You stop assisting them when you can see they need help or are struggling. You take their calls or respond to their calls when you feel like it. You mindfully misuse a gift they've given you. For instance, they bought you a car and you're driving around your ex-girlfriend in it. You ignore them and refuse to acknowledge them when you're surrounded by your friends, your colleagues, or family. You keep messing about with other women or men. You're constantly flirting with people in front of them and behind their back. You're cheating with someone else. You willfully keep lying to them all the time. You're not informing them of your whereabouts they are by leaving them worried about your well-being and you know they are worried and you don't care. You keep blanking them for days at a time, or what we call ghosting. You're always walking away from them to take a call, which I don't understand. You know, in a relationship, there must not be any secrets because secrets breed mistrust. So what is it that you're talking about on the phone that requires you to walk away from your partner to go and talk about it? Another one would be justifying your callous behavior and so on and so forth. Now, if you want to be trusted, you must give a reason to be trusted. You've got to end that trust. Stop being secretive all the time. Now, another thing is, um, in order to have a healthy relationship, you need to stop judging them based on your highest priorities or interests. We are all unique and therefore have different priorities and interests. The problem starts when we base the relationship or the reason for a relationship on how attractive the other person is. Physical attraction is fine and dandy, but that's not what sustains a relationship. If your personality, priorities, interests clash, trouble starts. You won't believe how many times that I've heard women say, oh, he's got to be tall and dark and handsome. And with some adding rich to the mix. And then I've heard men say, oh, she has to be well put together and she can cook. Now, those traits are supposed to be a bonus not the primary traits you should be looking for in a long-term relationship. Compatibility is the primary trait you should be looking for. For women, you can always earn your own money and even become rich if you want. Your tall, dark and handsome can end up being a bully, a serial beater, turning you into his prized punching bag or be after everything in a skirt. For men, 
you can learn to cook and stop letting women hold you hostage with food. What if she can cook the honey out of a pot, but is a serial cheater, sleeps with your sibling, your father, or your friends? What if she only wants you for your look or money? How long do you think she'd stay when you lose either of them? How long would any of your partners you've chosen based on their superficial traits stay when things hit rock bottom? Because that's the true test of a relationship. Would your relationship crumble like a pack of cards or stand solid like a rock? I hope I've given you enough food for thought and something to think about if you're not already in a relationship when you're trying to start dating someone. Or if you're already in a relationship, what to work on in order to make sure that you have a healthy relationship. So in conclusion, be each other's champion, hero, cheerleader, and stop competing with each other. Inspire and empower each other in order to bring out the best in one another. Always make room for each to grow with confidence. Find the things that connect you and make sure it is not super, um, superficial traits, but true complementing traits. Build on your relationship every day. A gorgeous house that is not taken care of daily will soon become an eyesore and a nightmare to live in. And that's just the same with a relationship. Work on your relationship every day. Don't take anything for granted. Don't let your relationship end up like a house that is now an eyesore and a nightmare to live in. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment below. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, don't forget to turn on your notification button. If you have any comments about the topic discussed today, please leave it um, in the comments section below. Or if you want to share something about your relationship or add to what I've just said um, about relationships and you want it shared on my podcast, please email it to me at podcast.ogn.okafor at yahoo.com. This email is also going to be in the description section. So if you didn't catch it, you can get it from there. Email me if you want any of your stories on love letters put on my podcast and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care of yourself. Bye.